What's up guys, my name is Joe Penna, aka Mystery Guitar Man, and I make videos that have VFX, stop motion, narrative short films, that kind of stuff. I'm here to talk to you guys about the importance of recording good sound for your videos, and how that can take your channel from amateur to professional. Here are some basic strategies to make sure that your videos have good sound when you're recording dialogue. Check out this video. Heather, wait, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> okay, that's Are you bad kidding sound. me? All right, okay. let's go again. Heather, wait, I forgot to tell you something really important. Come back! The sound's not that great, right? But now check out this video. Heather, wait, come back. I need to tell you something really important. That sounds much better. Sound is 50% of your final video, right? So you have to make sure that you're paying attention to it. First, let's talk about this. What is good sound? Good sound means that you've captured your audio at a high enough recording level where fans can hear everything being said, but not so high that your sound is distorted. Good sound starts with a good location. Oftentimes, a good location is overlooked and it's trumped by the camera department's needs or trumped by a cool looking location. I was on set once where the camera department had a generator to my left and there was construction happening behind us. Okay. Needless to say, the entire day's worth of shooting was useless. Everything had to be re-recorded in post-production. And guess what? All of the actors' beautiful performances were lost. So the main their presence on location scouts. And when you get there, listen. Listen for the street noises. Come back during a different time of the day and notice if the sound level is any different. And then do a walkthrough of the actual location with a mic recording. When you're on that location scout, just ask everybody to be quiet for about 30 seconds and record the sounds that you are hearing. Maybe there's something that you can't hear with your ears but that the microphone is picking up. This level of attention to detail must be maintained while you're shooting. This means that turning off all electronics on set is extremely important. Your iPhone, your clicky clicks, your email dings, whatever. This goes for your crew as well. Turn it off. No Facebook, no Twitter, no Tumblr, Instagram, or YouTube. Great. Now that everyone on set hates you, at least you have some good sound. But joking aside, electronics do create a noise and do interrupt signals to your microphone. So as far as you're turning everything off, make sure that the AC is off. Or the fridge. The fridge is the worst thing ever because it doesn't create a static hum. It goes in and out, which is one of the hardest things to dialogue edit later. Good sound also means understanding the best way to capture sound and which microphones to use in what situations. Are you shooting a wide shot or an establishing shot? An interview? a party scene. All these scenarios require different attention to detail and different recording strategy. But you don't have to get overwhelmed because once you understand what you're shooting, the microphone selection will be the easiest part. For example, when I started making my very first web series, I didn't realize that, for example, for a wide shot, you might need a microphone on a very long boom pole. I didn't get that kind of stuff. Also knowing how to properly pad your shooting space with sound blankets can really help deaden your shooting environment. The idea is to get clean enough audio where you don't have to recreate or reshoot anything in post, but also to allow you enough wiggle room in sound editing where you can comfortably push your audio levels without creating a noise. And remember, a great creator is someone who understands that picture and sound are equals when creating a successful series. In this part, we're going to be talking about microphone selection and which mic to use for your project. There are many, many, many different microphones, but fortunately, you probably only need to utilize a few of them in your shooting travels. But let's take a look at some of the more common ones and in which scenarios you should consider using them. Shotgun microphones are the most highly directional and available microphones. These types of microphones are most readily utilized on narratives and documentaries. First off, you want to get the shotgun as close to the subject as the camera frame will allow it, meaning that you don't want to ruin the shock by sticking a microphone in the frame but you want to get intimate with your subject. This is because I found that if the microphone is more than three feet away from the subject, it starts to sound really, really distant. So when you begin recording, you want the position of the mic above the actors and hold it at a downward angle. Now, some people tell you to point it towards the actor's chin or their diaphragm, and that's good too. Shotgun microphones are extremely versatile. For example, you can put one on a mic stand like this. Uh, even if you have a little one, you can put it on top of a camera. And that sounds a lot better than the built-in microphone because you don't have as much handling noise or you know that kind of noise of uh, you 
pressing a button or something like that. And you know, this is pretty directional. So whatever your camera is pointing at, it's just picking up that noise instead of everything. Lavalier microphones are great for doing interviews where the subject may be talking for long periods of time. That sounds familiar, right? And holding a boom pole may not be easy. Poor guy right here. Labs are also great because they're small microphones that can be hidden underneath clothing. The position of this mic is determined by what and how you're capturing sound. If you're laving a singer on a stage, then it might not be best to clip the mic on their clothing because it can rustle around and create a bunch of noise. But if you're just doing a simple interview, then the best place for the microphone is in the middle of your chest. Now let's chat about dual system recording. What is that? Many creators who are starting out tend to deal with the question of whether they should be recording sound directly into the camera or separately. Dual system recording is when you record sound into a device that's not attached to the camera. This recorded sound will then be synced up in post with a slate. The benefit of using dual system is that it could allow for much cleaner sound and much more control. It also allows your camera to remain cable free, which is beneficial if you're using something like a DSLR or you have more elaborate camera moves. There are also disadvantages to dual system recording. It can create some more work in the back end and will require the purchase of more equipment. It can also require more crew than you have money or resources for, since you can't really shoot and hold a microphone at the same time. Now to the good stuff, recording sound on location. Let's say that you forgot what I said earlier and you couldn't get a good location with good sound quality. What do you do? First off, you have to make sure that you have a bunch of sound blankets that you can try to throw up to deaden the noise or diminish any other little noises. But be aware that putting on sound blankets might not be a possibility at all times because they can get in the way of your shots, your lights, that kind of thing. Also use two different microphones, a boom mic and a lavalier mic, and send them to two different channels. This way it'll give you options. If one microphone is picking up a little bit of noise, you can switch to the quiet channel while you're editing. And if it's outside and it's windy, you want to make sure that you have a windscreen to put over your microphone. Wild lines are a great way to grab some of the dialogue in a clean fashion and directly on set. Wild lines are better in some ways than doing studio dialogue recording because the actors will be in the shooting space and in character and in costume. So potentially you'll get better performance when recording wild lines. I like bananas. Oh yeah. However, the downside to getting wild lines is that the audio won't be synced up to the picture. Recording room tone is really important when dialogue editing later so that you can make sure that the background sound for both characters matches. So in my example above with the two noise sources, actor A was in front of a generator and actor B was in front of a construction site. So I had two conflicting sounds going on in both directions. In editing, your goal is to make sure that the actors appear as they are in the same space. So this meant that I had to add construction noises underneath actor A when the camera was on him and add generator noises to actor B when the camera was on her. What room tone does is that it allows you to have fill to add underneath the actors to cut seamlessly from one shot to the next. So when you get room tone, I recommend you get it two different ways. One, with all of the noise running, keep all the generators and the lights on and then record it once more with everything turned off to give you both options in post-production. You should record room tone in every location that you're in, and it only takes about 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, that's a cut. All right, guys, so that was yeah, great. Right. I, I really cool. liked the way you did hey, the sound there, man. Hey, we gotta be quiet for room tone. Roll room tone. Remember that proper sound recording starts with caring about good sound. It's the one element that is easily overlooked, but can have a very significant impact on your finished product. Thank you so much for watching this lesson on recording some good sound. My name is Joe Penna, aka Mystery Guitarman, so if you want to watch my videos, you can click that button right there, or you can check out some more Creator Academy videos right there.